For decades, the Japanese have been trying to make a sports sedan to compete with the upper-level German sports sedans. Most of these attempts haven't been very successful, but one car that's worked out quite well is this Lexus ISF. It's really a sharp machine, especially when you see what's under the hood. Underneath all that plastic is a 5-liter V8 putting out 416 horsepower, hooked to an 8-speed automatic transmission, pulling around 3,800 pounds. Factory rates this at 0 to 60 in 4.6 seconds. Unfortunately, the gas mileage is rated at 16 to 23 miles per gallon, but hey, a car like this, you don't care that much about gas, right? Of course, it takes a lot more in a hot engine to compete with the high-end German cars, so we'll be looking at some other features as we go along. The cabin's a little on the cramped side. If you're over six feet tall, you might have a problem here. But uh, the materials and workmanship are very high grade. Far better than what you get on many Oriental cars. The glove box is well sized. However, in order for that to be, you have to remove this monster thousand page owner's manual from there and stick it in the trunk. This takes up about three quarters of the space. No reason to really be in there. One feature I liked was the auto dimming mirror system. These are fine for highway use, but in heavy city traffic you do not want to change lanes at night with an auto dimming mirror because you can't see what's next to you. You might run over a bicyclist with no headlights or who knows. But in this case we have an off switch. Very few auto dimming mirrors and cars have an off switch for some reason. It puzzles me. But we have one here so that's a good thumbs up. On the thumbs down however the sun visors fold down and up but they don't slide so you have some space here where the sun can bake your face when you're driving on long trips this seems to be a trait on many Toyota and Lexus vehicles for some reason kind of annoying it's not going to be a deal killer when it comes to buying or not buying the car the rear seating fits me quite well but I'm 5'10 if you're six feet or over back here you might be a little squeezed the seats are comfortable and I'm still noticing back here also that the materials and workmanship are very high grade and frankly overall this is a very well built car far above what you get on many other Japanese cars but uh, I would expect that on an upgraded Lexus When people see the four exhaust tubes sticking out of the bumper here, it tells them there's something under the hood besides a dinky six-cylinder. Looks pretty sharp. On the expressway, the ISF is very stable. But with a top speed listed at 168 miles per hour, I suppose it needs to be. It's a fairly quiet car on smooth pavement. However, on rough pavement, you get a lot of road noise coming up through the chassis and into the cabin. It's that stiff suspension once again. Since we're testing a high-end car, I figured we might as well go to a high-end city. So we're here in Scottsdale, Arizona, which some people call Snotsdale, Arizona, but that's another story. There's lots to see and do here. If you like shopping or tourist traps, there's Old Town Scottsdale with the small shops, bars, clubs, boutiques. There's Westworld where the Brett Jackson auto auction is held every year. If you don't like wasting your money shopping in Old Town Scottsdale, you can waste your money at the numerous Indian casinos surrounding Scottsdale. Although it's probably better being in there right now than it is out here since it's 116 degrees. Now we've got the Scottsdale Gun Club, one of the largest shooting facilities in the southwest. For $7,000 down and $200 a month you can have one of their platinum memberships. I can't afford that so I have the $360 a year Peon membership. But hey, I'm not making any money on these videos so I have no choice. 
And if you don't like indoor shooting, you know, cross the street to US Auto Weapons, where they have a big selection of machine guns, silencers, and other nice stuff. The same stuff they have at Scottsdale Gun Club. However, the biggest tourist spot is currently Amy's Baking Company, or Bistro. Back in April 2013, this was a nothing place, just another overpriced Scottsdale eatery with bad food. However, in May, they made the TV show Kitchen Nightmares with Gordon Ramsay, and what an episode that was. The owner, Sammy, was insulting customers, assaulting customers. Amy was messing up the food, spiking it people she didn't like, firing staff for no reason. Apparently, they've gone through over 100 staff in the past five years. Naturally, this caused a local sensation. There were so many people coming down here to gawk. They had to get four security guards and two Scottsdale police to run everybody off. We'll be stopping by here a little bit later during the week to try some of this food and see what this place is all about. By the way, this place has got about 2 million hits on YouTube. You really ought to log in and watch the show. It's pretty funny. It's coming. No, it's coming. No, no. You keep saying that. You've been saying that for an hour. Look at him. He's like, where's my pizza? <laughs> really? Send him home. Yeah, you have a pizza. It's coming. You want to wait? You wait. You don't want to pay what you have and you f*** up from here. Do you understand? Sammy? Do you f*** off? You f*** yourself. Go out, you f***. No, no, no. All right, enough with Amy's baking company. Let's get back to the car. When you're driving the ISF, it's pretty obvious this is a performance machine. The steering's very responsive. The brakes work absolutely perfect. Nice firm feel. Adequate passing power, by the way. The only drawback is the ride. Now, on a smooth surface like this, the ride's very comfortable. When you get into rough pavement, there's a lot of road noise coming up through the chassis. This is a pretty stiff suspension. But it's not unbearable, and you will get used to it. Other than that, the car body structure is pretty quiet. Now some auto enthusiasts are of the opinion that only Germans can make good sports sedans. And I know many owners of German sports sedans that wouldn't be caught dead in a Japanese car. Even those claiming to be sports sedans because they consider them somewhat of a fake. And in some cases this is actually true, but not in the case of the Lexus ISF. This is really a world class car with great performance. You certainly can't complain about the quality. I've been driving this now just under 500 miles and I'm really adapting to it. This is really a high class, high performance machine. And even if you are a German car freak, the Lexus ISF is certainly worth a look. Even for a BMW lover like me. Actually, if I had my choice between this and the BMW 335, my favorite car, it'd be hard to choose. It really would. But that in itself tells you how good the Lexus ISF is. Just a note, I've been driving around 115 miles and already down about a half a tank of gas. Of course, I don't really care because I'm having a lot of fun here. Want to be on YouTube? Yeah, yes, sir. YouTube. Well, tell me what you think about the car. It's a sick car. Pretty sick. We saw you flooring it earlier. That was awesome. How much do you think it costs? I know how much it costs. Well, how much? About 60. Oh, 68. Pretty good. Yeah, we have one. Pretty sick. Oh. Is it a babe magnet? Do you get girls with it? Yeah. Mine's black, though. I can't get girls with it. I think I'm too old. <laughs> Just floor it. You will. Floor it? And for her, okay. Well, you heard it, folks. Two out of two kids thinks that this is a hot car and a babe magnet. I think I've read this script before with another car. Oh, well, sounds good. 
One area where we had mixed reviews concerned the headlights. These are high intensity headlights. Right now they're on bright. And in that mode, lights up pretty good. No problem here. However, when using the low beams, you can see the light cuts off rather sharp. The vehicle is around 70 feet away. It's about a foot high on the right and it drops off to the left. This means when you're driving on back dark roads, especially on roads where you have wildlife, you have to be very, very careful. In those situations, you'll probably have to use your brights all the time. Just something to note if you do a lot of driving at night. We did have another point of concern on this car aside from the headlights. It's this body panel that runs along the vehicle. It really looks good, but it has a tendency to collect dirt, mud, sleet, things like that. Now in Arizona we don't have to worry too much because it's basically dust. If you live in the northwest where there's a lot of mud, it collects. And then what happens as you're entering and exiting the vehicle, it gets on your pants. This wasn't solved in the new 2014 IS series, by the way. And this is also a similar situation I find with lots of other vehicles nowadays. I just don't get it. What can I say? Don't be wearing white pants on a muddy day, that's all I can say. Well, I've got 225 miles on it and the tank's empty already. I don't mind this. 18 miles per gallon, but you sure could use a bigger tank here, I think. Good thing I brought all my old Shell and Exxon cards. Oh, but once again, who cares when you're having fun? I stated earlier in the video this car is rated at 16 to 23 miles per gallon. Since I was driving this city earlier, getting around 17 miles per gallon, that would explain the fact the tank was emptying early at 225 miles. However, driving 75 miles per hour on this freeway for some time, I'm averaging 25.5, and the computer showing a tank range of just around 270 miles. So it looks like on the highway I won't have you stopping to fill this tank as often. Actually, 25 and a half is pretty good for a car with this much horsepower. A lot of this good highway mileage can be attributed to the 8-speed automatic transmission. And on the freeway I'm only pulling 2,000 RPM. So the upper gears are obviously doing what they're intended to, and that's to save fuel. This confirms it, folks. Zero to 60 in 4.6 seconds. But uh, I don't think I'm getting 27 miles a gallon anymore. Now, Scottsdale's a swinging town, but around 2 in the morning, everything closes up. So we decided to leave the city limits and come out to the Tortilla Flats. This is where the Lost Dutchman gold mine is. We've got some nice twisty roads out here exactly what this car is itching for. So hang on. The last two high performance cars I drove on this road was an Aston Martin Vantage and a BMW 335 Turbo. As far as the handling and cornering ability, the Lexus ISF matches those two quite well. The ride isn't quite as smooth, a bit jittery, but this pavement's pretty rough.
brakes hold up real well. As we discussed earlier, the brights put out lots of light, but when you put on low beams, as demonstrated here, I can see out about 70, 75 feet max. On again, off again. So you're driving on these back roads, driving on low beam isn't a good idea. Especially in this part of the country because we've got a lot of wildlife that likes to sneak out on the road. And I can't see anything past that yellow sign. Now it's better. So you can drive the Lexus ISF at night. Plan on keeping your brights on often. At least on roads like this. Okay, time for our ending overview. Yes, I did have a few gripes about this vehicle. The sun visors that didn't adjust fully. The headlights that are pretty weak on low beam. The choppy ride and the lower door panels that get your pants dirty. But these are all minor complaints. I just listen because they're there and that's my job. But we get to the core positive things. The powerful engine with the 8-speed automatic that gives it some of the best acceleration in its class. The great steering, handling, braking, the excellent interior. This will match any German car in its class. And on top of that, you have Lexus reliability. Unlike German cars that start running repair bills out of warranty, the Lexus will still be running good at the 100,000 mile mark. I think that alone is worth the $66,000 price tag. Unfortunately, 2013 is the last year for the ISF. They won't be bringing it back until around 2015. So if you want one, you better hurry up and get it. Because when they're gone, they're gone. Now that we're wrapping up our Scottsdale driving test, I'm going to head back up to the shopping plaza, to Amy's Baking Company. Ever since the owners made fools out of themselves on the TV show Kitchen Nightmares, there have been gobs and gobs of bystanders and onlookers hanging out there. We're going to go in there and see if we can snag a couple of their pies, see what they taste like. Guess I am turning this into a food review show now. Well folks, I'm sorry the place is closed and we got a big crowd out here on a Saturday at 3 o'clock trying to get in. Look at all the money they're losing. Yeah, maybe they can, maybe they can put it in. Well, I hope not. i got to get a pie out of there for my review. Uh-oh. <laughs> I do TV, too. I'm not quite like them. Okay. You guys have a nice day. Thank you. Thanks. Well, folks, they've been closed for two weeks, and I can't get my pie. Maybe they'll see me on their security camera up here and give me a call. So I noticed you're going to Amy's Bistro there. Yeah, you, but we're just. But you haven't tried them, but you saw them on TV. Yes, I did. I hear it was real. I know people that work there. They said it was. Yeah. No, the people seem really rude. Well, so I'm trying to find out where the desserts come from. See, because she can't cook, uh -huh. and no one's ever seen her bake. Yeah. So all these pies mysteriously come in the counter, and I came in to get a pie. See. I'm not sure. Maybe, oh. maybe she's not even making her own pastries. Who knows. Maybe she's down at the uh, asylum or something. I don't know. All right. Well, enjoy your movie. Okay. We will reopen at 5 p.m. Hmm. That's what they said last week. Well, folks, I really, really tried to take you into this place, but it looks like Amy's gone bye-bye. Hope you enjoyed the car review, though. Well, while leaving Shea Scottsdale East, where Amy's is at, I noticed this sign out here. For lease, restaurant available. Hmm. Wonder if there's a connection. I'd ask them, but they're never in the shop. Well, we weren't able to show you Amy because she's not here, but this is what she looks like on the cover of Phoenix New Times magazine. I don't think she should be holding a knife. Check out those crazy eyes. Woo! I'm coming for you!